All right, now in module one, we're gonna move on to page 28, where there is some talk of density. Density is a very important concept in chemistry that we will um, talk about a lot. So we're gonna start with the definition. Squeak. Density. The definition is from your book, an object's mass divided by the volume, an object's mass divided by the volume that the object occupies. Density is an object's mass divided by the volume that the object occupies. Okay? In other words, density tells you how tightly packed the matter is in an object. Okay, so we'll write that down too. Density tells us how tightly packed the matter in an object is. Remember what matter is? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So when we're talking about an object's density, we are relating those two qualities together. It's mass compared to uh, how much space that object takes up, okay? I have a couple visuals for you here. For example, I have a baggie filled with little pom-poms, okay? And you can see the pom-poms. You can see that they're not completely uh, packed together super tightly. And so we would say that this bag is mm, not super dense when compared to the bag that is filled with coffee. The coffee uh, granules are much smaller, and so they can be much tighter packed inside this bag. And so you can see an example of something that is not very dense, this bag with pom-poms, versus this bag that's filled with coffee, which is more dense, okay? It would have a greater density. Another example I have for you is this beach ball that's been sitting here. This beach ball I filled just by blowing up myself, and you can see that it's pretty light, and you can see how much volume it takes up inside this beach ball. That's the space that it takes up. So the density, if you wanted to calculate it, would be the mass of the air inside this beach ball divided by the volume, if you knew how many millimeters, milliliters, this beach ball uh, took up, okay? So that's beach ball number one, which has a fairly low density. Compared to this other beach ball that I have, oh, this one is super, super heavy. Excuse me. I'm gonna try to lift it up for you. This morning I melted some lead and I used a tiny little funnel and uh, filled the beach ball with uh, molten lead and then let it cool. So this beach ball is actually really, really heavy. I'm having a hard time holding it up. So you can see that in this example, the beach ball takes up the same amount of space, but what's inside it has much greater mass. So the density is going to be higher. And I'm gonna have to set it down here a second because I can't hold it much longer. So you can understand and kind of visualize how the matter inside the second beach ball is much tighter packed than my breath inside the first beach ball. Ha! Did I fool you? It was both the same beach ball. But hopefully that gives you a good visual aid. Okay, let's try an example with density. Before our example, we're gonna need to know the symbol used for density, which is this Greek letter, rho, okay? Rho, or the density, equals mass divided by volume. Usually for our units, 
we're going to see grams per milliliter, or as we learned last video, grams per centimeters cubed, because one milliliter is the same as one centimeter cubed. Uh, so here's the formula for finding density. Let's take a look at, are you guys still chuckling about my beach ball example? Oh, it's so fun to do chemistry with you guys. All right, example 1.8 on page 30. A gold miner has just found a nugget of pure gold. He measures its dimensions and then calculates its volume to be 0 0.125 liters. Knowing that the density of gold is 19.3 grams per milliliter, calculate the mass of the miner's nugget. One thing I forgot to tell you is that all substances have a specific density, which is very handy because sometimes chemists, for example, might have a substance that they're ha having a hard time um, identifying. If they can calculate the density, they can compare it to a chart of substances and their densities, and they can then identify what the substance is. That might be one way that they could identify the substance. Uh, and so here we have an example of a miner who knows the density of gold, and he's gonna try to find uh, just how much gold he has, okay? So here's the equation for density. This is example 1.8, and we are looking for the mass. How many grams? Or maybe it's gonna be kilograms. I should say how, I should say question mark, mass. We're looking for the mass of the nugget. Okay, so here we're going to solve for n. So let's rearrange our formula here using our algebra skills. Okay, if we multiply this side by the volume, we need to multiply this side by the volume. These cancel out here. So the mass is going to be equal to the volume times the density of gold, okay? I'll write gold in here, even though you don't have to. Times the density of gold. So now we just have to fill in our values here, okay? Mass equals, what was the volume that he had? 0 0.125 milliliters. And we're gonna multiply it times the volume Excuse me, that was the volume. We're going to multiply it by the known density of gold because any sample of gold has the same density. It's always 19.3 grams per milliliter. Did I get that right? Checking back to my example in the book here. Yes, I did. Okay, so then we just have to multiply it out. Do you see any problems though? I see a problem. Our units. I messed up right here. It was 0 0.125 liters. Sorry, not milliliters. And I caught it because I knew I was supposed to catch something. Okay, so the volume was 0 0.125 liters times the density. But liters and milliliters are not gonna cancel each other out, okay? So we have to multiply by um, using the factor label method, which we learned about last time. And we're going to multiply by the relationship between milliliters and liters so that we can cancel out these units because our answer is just going to end up being grams because we're looking for the mass of something. We measure mass with grams or kilograms. Okay, so I know that our liters and our milliliters are going to need to cancel out. And so far, they're not matching, so they can't. All right, how many milliliters are in a liter? That's right, good job guys, 1,000. 1,000 milliliters equals one liter. Okay, if I want milliliters to cancel out in my problem, milliliters is in the denominator here, so it needs to be in the numerator here. And if I want my liters to cancel out, I can easily turn that into a fraction so we can look at it that way. Liters is in the numerator here, so it's gotta be in the denominator over here. And you can see how we're doing multiple steps in the same problem, that's absolutely fine. 
Okay, now we fill in our digits. The 1,000 goes on the top by the milliliters. The one goes on the bottom by the liters. And then we can just multiply and divide it out. So if I was gonna put this into my calculator, I would say 0.125 times 19.3 times 1,000. And I would get the answer to, I'm just looking in the book for the corrected digits because I, I don't have my calculator next to me like you are supposed to. I hope that you have yours next to you. 2,412.5 was the number that came out of the books calculator. Let's go through and cancel out our units. Liters cancels out, milliliters cancels out. Sure enough, we're gonna end in grams. And now for significant figures. How many significant figures were in this number? 0 0.125, the one, the two, and the five, three. How many were in the gold density? Three, one, nine, and three, three. Okay, so that means our answer has to end up with three sig figs, okay? Well, what about this one here? 1,000 milliliters over one liter, okay? When we're using these ratios, um, in the metric system, these are precise numbers, okay? So we don't have to count these up at all when we're talking about sig figs. Don't worry about the thousand or the one for sig figs. You're just looking at the values of the other numbers that you were given in the problem. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, read your book. They explain it there too. So how do we change this into only three significant figures? Well, we're gonna to have to move our decimal place over, aren't we? Because we can only fit three digits. So the decimal place must go here, which means we have to move the decimal place one, two, three times, which means here we say 2.41 times 10 to the third, because we moved it three times, grams. And there is our answer. And we get one point for the correct number. We get one point for the correct units, grams. We get one point for correct significant figures. Way to go, us. And you know what? I would give us 10 points for having fun together. So that's our discussion for the end of module one. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'm looking forward to seeing you in class. And I hope that module one goes great for you having to do it at home before we even meet each other in the classroom setting, that's okay. We're gonna buzz through the rest of the year and enjoy seeing each other weekly then.